bit stressful, isn't it? I don't know the particulars of your story, I don't know what you're going through right now, but I'm pretty sure I hit 90% of us if I say you're tired, you're frazzled, worried, and stressed. This has gone on a lot longer than we expected. You remember back in March when we thought that it would just be for a couple weeks and that we'd be back in church by Easter maybe? Remember when we measured time in weeks? Ugh. And even as we move towards reopening, there's no parties or rejoicing about it. Reopening brings about its own anxieties and stresses. We have this looming threat of a second wave in the fall. We know it's going to happen, we just don't know how bad it's going to get. And it's hard to relax and feel any sense of normalcy with all of that in the back of our minds. COVID-19 is like the lion in today's readings, prowling outside, looking for someone to devour. We hear it stirring, we hear it roar. How It keeps us on edge, alert and afraid. How can we sleep at night knowing that that lion is out there? We knew that this would be hard when it started, but it gets harder in different ways as the months go on. And this lion, this COVID devil, never gives us a chance to rest and recuperate. We're short-tempered, we're irritable, we're not the same people of grace and compassion that we would normally be. How do we get through this? How do we survive this trial, this suffering? I find a lot of encouragement in, and comfort in Peter's words today. Mostly, though, because it's not very comforting. Peter is not the nurturing type. He doesn't put his arm around us and say, Ah, oh, there, there, it's going to be okay. No, he's more like, What did you expect? <laughs> you're surprised that you're suffering? You think it's unfair that you're going through a hard time? You think this, this suffering is unprecedented or unusually difficult? He says, don't be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering, as if something strange were happening to you. We're not the first generation to go through a pandemic. We're not the first generation to suffer. And if you're a Christian, you especially should expect suffering. Jesus called you and you just said, here I am, Lord. Jesus said, follow me, and you'll say, I'll go anywhere that you lead. Jesus said, pick up your cross, and we were like, oh, well, we'll do our best. And then we see him get nailed to that cross, cry out in pain, witness him express love to the criminals beside him, and then ask for God to forgive his enemies as he's being executed. And we're standing here like, Wait, is, is that what we're supposed to do now? Is, is this supposed to happen to me too? We're standing here at the foot of Golgotha, carrying our cross on our shoulders, with a Roman soldier walking towards us, swinging his hammer, and we're surprised by what comes next? One thing I can promise you is that if you choose to follow Christ, if you decide to journey with him, it leads to suffering. It leads to the cross every time. Don't be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering as if something strange were happening to you. But rejoice. Rejoice that you are still here walking this journey. The fact that you are suffering now shows that you are still on his path. You are still walking with Christ. You are still carrying your cross. You are still being lifted up and strengthened by God. Everyone around the world is suffering right now, but we as Christians should suffer even more because we will be suffering to do good in the midst of a pandemic. Everyone is worried about their finances, and we are too, but we also suffer to feed the hungry and work to end poverty. Everyone is suffering with their health and well-being, but we also suffer to care for the sick and pray for our neighbor. Everyone is suffering with short tempers, as we are too, but we also suffer with the command to love our enemies and to pray for those who persecute us. As Christians, those, those additional sufferings are signs that you have not given up your calling. It is proof that you still walk with your Lord. It is something to boast in and be proud of. You are suffering to serve your neighbor and bring glory to God. Rejoice in that! Because God does see you. 
God sees your faithfulness. God sees what's in your heart. God sees the good work that you are doing that no one else might see. Everyone else is just trying to survive a pandemic, but you, followers of Christ, you are called to do even more. You're not just trying to survive, you are working to bring about God's kingdom. You are sharing God's love. You are calling for an end to oppression. You are casting a vision of a better world. All are suffering anyways, but you are letting God use your sufferings to bring about healing and hope. Rejoice that you are tired, because you are tired for some very good, very holy reasons. When we remember why we are suffering, for whom we are suffering, that's where we find our strength and rest. Sometimes we trip over the cross that we're carrying, we collapse into the ditch, wondering why we're trying so hard, but then we look up. We see where Christ is, we see where he ascended to, and we remember, we remember where we're headed and why we're doing it all. In that moment, we get a second wind, a new strength rises up in us that we didn't know we had. The Spirit of God pouring in on us and restoring and renewing us. So keep it up, people of God. Hold fast, be patient, stay humble. God is with you and will redeem your sufferings, bringing glory and rejoicing in the days to come. Amen. I'm going to invite you to join with me in prayer. And in that prayer, I want to give thanks to God for all the ministry that you are doing wherever you are. Your faithfulness to this mission of God transforms our community and the world. And I thank God for your financial support of this ministry too. You're ensuring that we still have a building to meet in whenever this pandemic does come to an end. If you feel called to God to contribute to this work and you haven't done so before, donating's easy. You can do it online by clicking on the link in the description or message the church if you want to mail a check to our treasurer. Let's pray. Lord God, we rejoice that in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have called us to follow you. You have commanded us to carry our cross. You have led us through death into eternal life. We offer to you all the work that we do, all of who we are, all of our suffering, all of our trials, knowing that you can transform tragedies into miracles. Out of our sufferings, you can bring grace. Out of our struggles, you bring hope. We dedicate to you our finances, the work of our hands, the burdens of our hearts, every email and text, every meal and act of kindness, every smile and gentle gesture to your glory. Use them all, use all that we are, to make this world a little more like heaven. Amen. I end now with the blessing that can be found in Peter's letter. May the God of grace who called you to eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while, restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To God be the power forever and ever. Amen.